Rice was very influenced by the educational philosophy of John Dewey. Dewey was a member of the board of trustees of the college for a period and believed in what the college was doing. What was that? That was essentially adopting Dewey's philosophy of learning by doing and adapting it to higher education. So most pre-K programs in the United States and lots of other places in the world essentially use a Dewey in philosophy. That is, they believe that children learn best by doing things, making things, drawing things, singing things, and so forth. And that was very much Dewey's idea. Dewey thought that you get a lot more knowledge out of actually working with things in the world with your hand and your mind than you do passively listening to somebody talking or reading a book. Dewey was the leading public intellectual, among philosophers anyway, in the United States in the progressive period, the period around the First World War and after. Among other things, he was the heir to the pragmatic tradition, which he got from William James, whom he knew. Charles Purser was his teacher. Oliver Wendell Holmes, whom he greatly admired. And his philosophy of education is connected with that. It's not just pragmatic, but it's very much consistent with the pragmatic idea that the way our minds work has to do with our adaptation to the environment. That's why we have minds to begin with. It helps us cope with the world. So if you think about how we acquire knowledge, we do acquire knowledge by trying to deal with the environment that we find ourselves in. That's a very pragmatic idea. So what's the thrust that he brings to Black Mountain College? So how do you make that work in higher education? That's the question. Because you're trying to study subjects like history, sociology, science, and so forth. I mean, what does it mean to actually learn by doing when you're trying to learn those kinds of areas of knowledge? And Rice decided that what it meant was that no matter what students did, and it was an incredibly permissive school, you could take any courses that you wanted, you had to do something involving arts practice. Hmm. You had to take a painting course, a weaving course, a sculpture course, a photography course, a dance course, something that actually involved you physically in the act of making something. And that wasn't because Rice wanted to produce artists and sculptors and dancers and photographers. It's because he wanted to produce citizens. And he thought that if you have to make something, you have to make choices all the time when you're creating a picture or a dance or a piece of weaving, whatever it might be. And learning how to make choices independently is very important for democracy. So he really thought, and this is also a very Dewey idea, he really thought that the purpose of education is to make people good citizens in a democracy. Mm -hmm. And that involves what Dewey called associated living, doing things with other people and in the world. And that was what Black Mountain was committed to. The notion is somehow that every man, woman, and child is born to be an artist at some phase or in some dimension, right? I think that it does depend on that idea. And that's true for when we teach little kids, too. It's the idea that everybody can draw a little bit. Everybody can make music a little bit. Everybody can dance a little bit. And there's no reason why when somebody gets 18 or 20 or 25 years old, they should stop doing those things. Mm. And if you tap into that, even at that age, they don't have to do it well. They just have to do it, and they'll, by doing it, develop certain capacities they can't develop in any other way.